Just at 10 on Channel 7 News, big news from the big leagues. Miami's being recommended for a major league baseball team. We'll have Team 7 coverage. Two men pose as cops in a daring home invasion robbery. The suspect in last week's Gainesville murders is a carpet cleaner. How can you make sure you're safe when a repair person comes to your home? And in New York tonight, the bombs are bursting in air to salute the veterans of Operation Desert Storm. These stories and much more coming up first at 10 on Channel 7 News. You're all dressed so nicely. On the next... Curtain drops by with a surprising statistic. A recent report in the New York Times shows that in 1991, men are contributing one full minute a day to household chores. <laughs> That's the swinging sound of Kit McClure and her all-girl big band. The Joan Rivers Show, tomorrow at 10 on WSBN 7. In a world of mass-produced fashion, Kay Chapman creates one-of-a-kind silk designs, unique classics. They're the only thing she puts her name on. At Wishbone, salad dressing is the only thing we put our name on. For our new light olive oil classics, we blend imported olive oil with delicious herbs and spices. Cholesterol-free, saturated, fat-free. A wholesome new taste for your family. Wishbone, salad dressing is the only thing we put our name on. Perfect for Father's Day. The number one selling knit golf shirt at department stores. Now at Ross. The only difference is the price. You're watching South Florida's news station. WSVN 7. Fitz. Sanchez. This is Channel 7 News at 10. Miami makes a pitch for baseball. And it looks like a grand slam home run. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Chambers sitting in for Rick. In baseball terms, we have just rounded third base, and we're heading for home with a winning run. Miami is just one step away from having its own Major League Baseball team, and that final decision could come in a matter of days. We have Team 7 coverage beginning with sports director Jim Barry. All right, Sally. For months now, you know, rapid speculation has put Miami at the top of baseball's expansion list. Today, we heard it right from the horse's mouth. The National League has confirmed that Miami and Denver are its recommended choices for expansion teams. Uh, I think you're talking about June the 13th. Baseball was a hit at Joe Robbie Stadium in the spring, and Wayne Huizenga is a hit with baseball's expansion committee. That's why it was no surprise when the blockbuster man got this phone call today from National League President Bill White. We received word from uh, Bill White this afternoon that uh, well, we are one of the uh, two finalists. Uh, from the, uh, got the approval of the National uh, League Expansion Committee, and needless to say, we're very pleased and excited for, uh, for everyone in South Florida, ourselves included. If a majority of the owners rubber stamps the committee's decision, then baseball is on the way here for sure in the spring of 1993. But what about season tickets, team colors, and most of all, the team's name? We've given a lot of thought. Uh, You're not going to tell us something? We're not going to tell you until the final vote is taken. Mm, keeping his cards close to the vest. Owners may vote on that recommendation as soon as Wednesday when they meet in Los Angeles. Although baseball commissioner Faye Vincent doubts the vote will actually come that soon. Nevertheless, a Channel 7 sports crew will be there to see if they do indeed vote. I'll have more on this big breaking story later in sports. Sally. All right, we'll see you later, Jim. Miami's mayor is cheering loudly. Xavier Suarez calls today's announcement the culmination of a dream, which is not only good for Miami, but good for baseball, too. I think they're going to realize that in a couple of years when they see the incredible international attention that the city gets and Miami's, uh, Miami will be a stage for Major League Baseball to become fully internationalized vis-a-vis uh, -vis Europe, the Caribbean, and Japan. The mayor says that baseball completes the triple play of Major League franchises with the Miami Heat and the Miami Dolphins. So the mayor isn't the only one looking forward to the games, not to mention all the peanuts and the Cracker Jack. Fans throughout South Florida are already going batty. Channel 7's John Turchin continues our Team 7 coverage with fan reaction. Peanuts, cold beer, soda! Oh, 
Baseball has always been a big hit in South Florida, whether it's taking in a doubleheader at Lockhart Stadium, watching the Fort Lauderdale Yankees, or an exhibition game during the spring. We diehards just can't get enough, which explains why fans can't wait for the first pitch to be thrown at Joe Robbie. To take my three kids and give them a taste of, of what it's all about. It's a tradition. It's baseball. It's America. It's, it's where it's at. No argument from the youngsters. They're anxious to get a glimpse of a big leaguer up close, but some, like this little guy, have another goal. Well, first of all, i got to catch a fly ball, you know? <laughs> That's been my goal. I haven't caught one yet, but I hope to do so. While no one can predict the success of a new team, we can pretty much bet on one thing, that old Mother Nature is going to have a thing or two to say on more than one occasion. I'll be at the games. My dad will be at the games. My brother will be at the games. Lots, lots of friends and family. <laughs> All over town, they're going batty. Croco's Sports Lounge, no exception. Live baseball is nothing like it. You know, you can watch it on TV, but live, it's totally different. I think it's great for South Florida. Uh, we already had basketball now. We have football and Major League Baseball. I guess all we're looking for is hockey now. Merchants figure to take a crack at an almost sure right market with rookie card collectors and autograph seekers eager to feel a part of the new game in town. Collecting cards and attachment of the game. You know, it's more than just watching the game. They want to get more involved, so they collect the play. Players. This is a way of kind of getting more personal by having a, a personal stake into the into the game. They have their player's card. They root for the player to do well. No doubt, South Florida has finally stepped to the plate. They've joined the big leagues, something these guys hope to do real soon. In Fort Lauderdale, John Turchin, Channel 7 News. One thing we all need to keep in mind, though, big league baseball means big league bucks. It costs a family of four about $20 to attend a minor league game and have a couple of hot dogs. We are told that a major league game will run you almost three times that much. Well, it's been a scary night for a family in northwest Miami. Two men posing as police officers forced their way into the family's home and tried to rob them. A friend of the family stopped by while the intruders were inside. Police say that's when the suspects ran out of the house. Several shots were fired. No one was hurt. Nothing was stolen. But police say they have no suspects. And we have more clues tonight as to why two Gainesville college students were murdered last week. Police say the carpet cleaner who confessed to the killings claims that the women attacked him with mace. Channel 7's Patrick Frazier begins our Team 7 coverage. Quietly, peacefully, students return to class today. The people hired to protect them are still very wary, but most kids again feel the danger has passed. Well, I guess because he's only on one side of town, I'm way, I live way in the country, so I have any problem. I live in a, in a dormitory, and I feel that dormitories are, are fairly safe. Why this man allegedly did what he did is becoming a little more clear. Alan, Alan Davis says he became angry when Eleanor Grace sprayed him with mace. But detectives aren't sure he's telling the truth. He's made some statements to us that are right on the money and some that we question, to be honest with you. And still uncertain, if Grace did mace Davis, what was he doing to threaten her? Meantime, the picture emerging of Davis is of a poor, struggling carpet cleaner who lived in this rundown trailer in rural Alachua County. He moved here from Gainesville to have the space to grow a garden. Apparently, he hadn't started. Take a look at that trailer, then take a look at this trailer in a park where Davis used to live, and you can see why he's no longer here. He was asked to leave, the manager told me, because he kept the place in such a mess. But he wasn't missed much. Larry Quizen used to live across the street from Davis. They never spoke to each other. I don't know anything about the guys that lived across the road. You lived there? Didn't even know him? No, that's right. Yet being a quiet loner is not a crime. Davis's family says he was simply a peaceful, devoted father. He's taking care of my uh, four nieces and nephew and my son and my younger brother. I've never seen the guy even slightly angry. Even police agree his background doesn't seem to indicate that one day Davis would allegedly explode in rage and choke two young women to death. He seems to be a pretty average person. Nothing out of the ordinary certainly doesn't have uh, a, a horrendous past uh, leading up to this homicide. And despite the discrepancies in Davis's confession, detectives are convinced he is the killer. We were told, quote, the evidence is overwhelming. Only one man could have committed these murders. That man is Alan Robert Davis. In Gainesville, Patrick Frazier, Channel 7 News. Now, we all have people come to our homes to clean or make some sort of repairs, so how can you be sure that you're going to be safe when they do come in? 
Well, Channel 7's Rochelle Bridges is working on that story right now. We're going to bring it to you a little bit later on in this newscast. Two killers are still on the loose tonight after shooting a man they were trying to rob. It happened this morning outside the Ramada Inn on the 168th Street in Northwest Day. Police think the two men tried to rob a 30-year-old man as he got out of his truck. The victim fought back and he was shot several times. He died at the hospital. Four Miami judges are benched tonight with pay. They're charged with corruption in the courtroom. Other judges started taking up the slack today for the four judges. Over the weekend, federal and state agents raided the judges' offices and homes. The U.S. attorney says undercover agents paid them money for bond reductions and other favorable rulings. All four jurists work at Dade's Metro Justice Building, and as you can imagine, the rumors are flying there. Rumors start on one floor and work their way up, and by the time you come back down to the first floor, they've expanded to 20 more judges, so it's, it's hard to say. I, 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 anything's, anything's possible, and it's all up for grabs. I hope none of it's true. MJB veterans say this is the biggest scandal they've seen in 20 years. They also expect more judges to be named and that this could be just the tip of the iceberg. A small town out in Nebraska is picking up the pieces tonight after being ravaged by a tornado. An amateur photographer shot these pictures of the twister. The storm hit last night, destroying several homes, damaging about 30 others. City officials say that several people were hurt, but at this point we don't know how many exactly or how bad the injuries are. And the search is over for a Missouri couple killed during a scuba diving accident. Jerry and Angie Kennedy were diving with a friend yesterday when they swam into an underground cave. The friend waited for them to come out, but they never made it. The Kennedys drowned before they could find their way out of that cave. Their bodies were found earlier today. An amazing story of survival tonight. A Tennessee man has survived after being stung by more than 1,000 bees. 66-year-old John Reeves has raised bees as a hobby for 15 years. He's also a diabetic, and this weekend he had an insulin reaction. Reeves' wife says he went into a seizure and accidentally kicked one of his beehives. Paramedics couldn't help him because of the insects. He was finally rescued by firefighters wearing aluminum suits. Reeves was stung from head to toe. He even swallowed some bees and had stingers inside his mouth. Tonight, he's in the hospital in fair condition. It's a brush with nature. Some folks in Utah would rather forget. A wild cougar tore through their neighborhood in Salt Lake City today. Terrified neighbors called animal control officers, and they came out and shot the cat with a tranquilizer gun. He literally bounced off the walls before they could take him away. Still ahead, first at 10 here on Channel 7, the party for the troops is turning into a real blast tonight in New York. of Desert Storm take the Big Apple by storm in one of the largest ticker tape parades you're ever going to see. And two different amusement parks are the scenes of horrible accidents. Channel 7 News, brought to you in part by American Express. Traveler's checks. Don't leave home without them. Here's the cash you set aside for your scuba lessons. You are going to spend this on souvenirs for the kids. But this punk has other plans for your vacation money. Yeah. It's your vacation. Do something about it. Carry American Express Traveler's checks. Don't leave home without them. Those line, waistline, toe the line with light line. Light line protein, fortified skim milk, low in fat and better than thin milk. True milk taste is the reason why it's the best skim milk you'll ever try. Smooth lines, outlines, keep in line with light line. Boundary line, hem line, the bottom line is light line. Light line protein, fortified skim milk, it's from Borden. It's true, and that's the line that's best for you. Stay in line with light line. Tuscany. 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 The fragrance for men by the Tuscany.
Tuscany granite faced watch together with a 3.4 ounce spray cologne. Now at Burdine's. Every second of an asthma attack can feel like an eternity. That's why there's Primatine Mist. Primatine opens clogged breathing tubes in as fast as 15 seconds. Primatine Mist, the fastest type relief known. My hemorrhoids hurt so much, I was afraid I needed surgery. But my doctor said they weren't serious, and it's time I used Preparation H. Preparation H helps shrink swelling of inflamed hemorrhoidal tissues and often relieves pain, itching, and burning for hours. Doctor recommended Preparation H. The Big Apple threw a big all-American party today to welcome our soldiers home from the Persian Gulf. The day started with a parade and it ended with fireworks. <laughs> Part of Operation Welcome Home, a huge celebration to honor the veterans of Operation Desert Storm. And any New Yorker will probably tell you that this fireworks display is bigger than Saturday's display in Washington, and that one was hyped as the biggest in history. Well, the cleanup crews now have their work cut out for them up in New York. Four and a half million people turned out today for that ticker tape parade to welcome home America's fighting men and women from the Persian Gulf War. Most of them had never seen anything like it. 12 million pounds of ticker tape floating to the ground, along with a million yellow ribbons as well, and enough balloons to fill a six-story building. Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf and his bosses led the way in their convertible cars, followed by some 12,000 Desert Storm veterans all marching through this cloud of paper. Soldiers from every state and 15 coalition countries formed more than 500 marching units. That's four times the number in the Tournament of Roses parade. And they marched through the streets of Manhattan in 90 degree weather. Others though rode in military vehicles like the Humvees. Some even came in airplanes watching the welcome signs. Pretty soon though, it was hard to even see the streets filled with paper and some two million people. The returning heroes couldn't believe the salute. I've never thought that I would participate in a, in a take a take parade. This is pretty incredible. Uh, I never thought something like this would happen to little old me. To many of the old timers, though, this reminded them of a scene of more than four decades ago. The welcome given to soldiers returning from World War II. And we understand that the cleanup is just beginning now, and what a nightmare. Tons and tons of ticker tape, as I mentioned, 10,000 pounds of multicolored confetti. Add to that 140 miles of yellow ribbons and streamers. It's all laying out there on the street, not to mention the reams and reams of computer paper that was tossed out of office windows. Well, paper is the least of Washington's problems right now. All those tanks and heavy artillery from Saturday's National Victory Parade really left their mark on this city, literally. There are inch-deep tread marks all over the streets, all over the area's main streets. City engineers had thought that the streets could handle the assault, but they were wrong. Now Washington's mayor wants the federal government to pay for the repairs. Well, if you couldn't get to the celebrations in Washington or New York, don't worry, Miami is having a parade of its own. It's this Friday. It's set to kick off at the corner of West Flagler Street and Northwest First Avenue at 4 p.m. The route goes east on Flagler Street to Biscayne Boulevard, then it's north on Biscayne to Northeast Third Street, and that's where the parade is going to end. Once again, it is Friday beginning at 4 p.m., but all the celebrating continues all night at Bayfront Park. And a royal thanks to Allied troops of the Gulf War. Prince Charles and Princess Diana were among the dignitaries who gathered in the German town of Munster. Now this was a more solemn ceremony, a ceremony of remembrance and thanks. 25 British servicemen died in Operation Desert Storm. And a former Gulf soldier says that he never wants to have to kill again. You may remember him, this is Jeffrey Zahn, the Navy Lieutenant who was shot down over a rock and on the second day of Operation Desert Storm. The POW appeared bruised and battered on Iraqi TV. He was forced to denounce the U.S. Well, in a newspaper interview, Zahn now says that Americans only hear how the U.S. beat the Iraqis. What they didn't get to see, he said, was the Iraqi mothers being killed in the streets. Still ahead, an explosion rips through an Iowa warehouse and pieces of the building are seen flying through the air. 
And the Presbyterian Church says no to sex tonight. And how can you make sure that you're safe when a stranger comes to your house? That story coming up next. Over the years, cooling systems have gotten better and better. Unfortunately, they've also gotten more and more expensive. But FPL can help you pay for one of the latest energy-saving, super high-efficiency systems so you can keep your electric bill down without really working at it. To find out about FPL's cooling and heating discount, call us. We're here to help. I put off going to the doctor. But this burning stomach kept waking me up at night. Finally, I just went. I can imagine how relieved I was when my doctor said, my Lanta. He said I had heartburn. And heartburn like mine needed a strong medicine. My Lanta is strong medicine. Strongly recommended. In fact, my Lanta is the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor said my Lanta. Now available in cherry and cool mint cream flavors. On June 15th, grab your fishing pole and head for the water. WSVN 7 and these sponsors invite you to sign up for the Crime Stoppers Fishing Tournament. For more information, call 493-TIPS. Tragedy at a popular Ohio amusement park. Two men were electrocuted and a woman fell to her death from a ride. Now, the park is Kings Island. It's up near Cincinnati. Police say that a man reached into a pond and got a deadly jolt of electricity. Another man who was shocked while trying to save him. And at almost exactly the same time, a woman fell 60 feet out of a ride. A lady somehow uh, was thrown from the ride. We don't know how that happened. There's two restraint devices uh, inside the, the ride. One is a shoulder harness that holds you in. The other is a lap device that holds you in. Well, that particular ride was shut down. Its manufacturers are now flying in from Europe to figure out what went wrong. And park officials are still trying to figure out how a live wire ended up in that pond and terror at an Iowa amusement park as a roller coaster chain snaps, sending the cars flying backwards. This accident happened at the Adventureland Park in Des Moines. The coaster was climbing to the top of the hill when the chain suddenly snapped. Four people were hurt. The rest of them, though, walked away unscathed. Crews are now running tests to figure out why the chain broke. To the east, a huge explosion rocks Clinton, Iowa, and even parts of neighboring Illinois. The blast happened early this morning at a grain processing plant. The strength of the explosion sent chunks of metal and concrete flying into the surrounding neighborhood. Miraculously, no one inside the plant or outside was hurt, and no word yet on what caused that blast. A former Radio City Music Hall rocket is dead tonight, killed in a brutal stabbing. 30-year-old Alexis Welsh was walking her dogs a block from her Upper West Side apartment when a man attacked with a nearly foot-long butcher knife. It looked like what he was punching, but he was stabbing her with a 10-inch butcher knife. And when I came back to her, I saw the handle sticking out of her lower back. Just before she died, Welsh was somehow able to identify her attacker. Neighbors spotted him, trailed him into Central Park, and they called police, and they caught him, and now he's in jail. It is a controversial battle over changing sexual values. Tonight, the Presbyterian Church is just saying no. A national conference in Baltimore has been the scene of heated debate on this issue for several days now. A committee suggested several changes in attitudes about sex and sexuality. Among other things, it would have given the church's blessing to things like premarital sex and homosexuality. But tonight, church members voted to reject that report. As we told you earlier in our newscast, the suspect in last week's Gainesville murders is a carpet cleaner. Now, one time or another, we all call for a repairman, but do we know actually who is coming into our homes? Channel 7's Rochelle Bridges continues our Team 7 coverage now with a look at how we can protect ourselves and our homes. He had done my, he had done some repairs for me and he was, in fact, he was there with his wife and he was just the nicest man you could ever imagine. This college kid trusted Alan Davis. Davis is now facing two murder charges for killing his last two customers, two University of Florida co-eds. Last Halloween, Judge Harvey Baxter's wife let in two men masquerading as burglars. It was a trick, no treat. They robbed her. If you own a home, you've no doubt called a handyman for help. And, and they encourage us to let our fingers do the walking. The trouble is, we don't know exactly who's walking into our home. Hello. 
with Roto-Rooter. When the Roto-Rooter man finally arrived to fix the leak in the sink, Darlene Joyner greeted him, forgot all about asking for ID verification. I guess I should have checked, but I didn't. But I, I, I knew about when he was coming. If, if I didn't know the time, that I, I would have been more cautious. And my husband was here. Having someone in the house is a good idea. What's more, Rotor Rooter sends prospective employees through a rigorous background check. They not only ask about criminal priors and credit history, they want them clean cut. An image is important to our customers, and sending a person to your door with, with their hair sloppy and with a beard is, is sort of intimidating to per, a person who doesn't know you. Okay, that's fine. We had a lady who called in who was, who was a little bit concerned about the person that we were going to be sending out there, and um, she wanted to know what he was going to look like, what color hair he was going to have, and what his name was going to be. Checking and double-checking who you're letting into your home may be the safest way to be safe. Rochelle Bridges, Channel 7 News. Well, there's one more precaution. Police suggest that if something starts to happen, you should have a plan already to get out of the house and fast. There seems to be no end in sight to the number of Cubans floating here to South Florida. 18 more were picked up today in a sinking boat off Key West. And among them is a 75-year-old woman and four kids. Four other uh, refugees were rescued in the Keys yesterday. Now, this pushes the number of Cubans reaching South Florida this year to 955. That's more than double the total for all of last year. Still ahead, troops in the Philippines are moving out, but the enemy is Mother Nature. And a deadly volcano in Japan is triggering some new fears and a lot of new dangers. And I'm meteorologist Tom Burr speaking to Mother Nature. Over the last three days, we've had a lot of rain. I'll tell you how much in a couple of moments. You know the old saying, you can never have too much of a good thing? Yeah. Well, whoever said that must have had the Arsenio Hall show in mind. Because this week's guests are too good to be true. On Monday, watch for L.A. Law's Susan Rutan, Chicago Bull Scotty Pippen, and Melissa Manchester. Later in the week, go a few rounds with Muhammad Ali and Thomas Hearns. Then move to the music of Simple Minds and sex symbol Sheila E. Don't miss a minute. Stay up a little bit longer for the Arsenio Hall show. Tonight at 11 on WSVN 7. Even though I'm passionate about this new haagen frozen yogurt, I'll still share it with you. Mm. Who could have believed there'd ever be a frozen yogurt so rich, so creamy, so haagen -Dazs. But don't worry, I'll just have a little and the rest is yours. I promise I'll save you some. I will. I really will. New 96% fat-free haagen frozen yogurt. Taste the passion. They were friends with so much in common. Little did they know how close they would become. Somehow Holly just meant Sandy. She's in the kitchen right now. Mary Tyler Moore. I didn't know you when I met him. It's all right, as long as you don't know the wife. Why didn't you tell me you were happily married? Ted Danson. I never said I was unhappily married. Sam Waterston. I mean, you're not the kind of guy who does this kind of thing. And Christine Lottie. I'm pregnant. Just between friends. Tuesday on the WSVN 7 Movie at 8. <laughs> Young ladies between the ages of 18 to 27 are eligible for this year's Miss Florida USA pageant and earn the right to compete in the nationally televised Miss USA pageant. Call 1-800-BEAUTIES for details on entering this year's Miss Florida USA pageant. Live August 3rd at 7 o'clock on WSVN. Live from the Channel 7 Weather Center, Bob Soper. Well, I'm meteorologist Tom Burson for Bob tonight. I hope you've got an umbrella because over the last uh, few days you've certainly needed it. Well, probably will continue to need it. Look at these numbers over the last three days. Miami, we've had uh, about an inch and a third of rain. Fort Lauderdale, 5.08. North Dade, over five inches also. Kendall, about two and a half, a little bit better, and an inch 37 in Homestead. That, again, is over the last three days. Now, there is one little strange quirk of nature here. Fort Lauderdale has normally been running for the year more rain than we have in here. 
here in Miami. That's just the nature of the atmosphere down here for the year. So far in Fort Lauderdale, 20, uh, 28.77 inches of rain versus 15.17 here in Miami. So almost double the rain in Fort Lauderdale. Speaking of rain, here's how it looked out there today if you were out running around or driving. Boy, it was kind of nasty for a while in some areas. It was peppering on down. The trees were moving. The cars had slowed down. And uh, make sure if you're out there driving, you slow down and take it easy and turn on the headlights because it gets rather slick out there on the highways. And it looks like we'll probably have some more rain in the forecast for tomorrow. Right now on uh, the radar, let's see what's going on. You can see showers and storms out there at the moment. Some of these in the north end of Florida Bay and uh, South Dade and the upper and middle keys are fairly heavy at the moment. And they are pushing to the southwest. You'll need to continue to watch that tonight. A couple of uh, light showers yet up in Palm Beach County. Stationary front, this is the front that came through the other day and it parked down here. Boy, this is late in the season for this kind of a front to get this far south. But here it is to our south, and that means the, the area in the far south part of Florida and the Keys will see the best chance of rain over the next couple of days because of this. Other than that, high pressure is trying to build down from the south, so most of the state, with that exception, is going to be in pretty good shape. We're also watching something else. There's a little disturbance which is sitting over here in the western uh, Gulf. It's going to drift to the east a little bit, and that's going to start increasing the chance for rain up in the north end of the state about as quickly as it dried out. It'll start picking it up again as we head into tomorrow. Other than that, across the balance of the country. Well, some pretty good rains in Iowa today. 60 mile an hour winds uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Some tornadoes in eastern sections of Colorado today, although no reports of major damage. And look at all this moisture, just scattered showers and storms along this front. And back out to the west, things have not been all that bad. There is a little disturbance coming into the Pacific Northwest, and that means more showers for those folks. But for us tonight, look for the 60s over most of the state, down to around Orlando. Then we pick up the uh, mid-70s over South Florida tonight. A couple scattered showers. Main Mainly uh, in the far south tip of the state, down here, South Dade, and in the Keys for overnight tonight. And for tomorrow, we're going to see temperatures back in the upper 80s. And a few widely scattered showers, again, mainly over the south half of the state. Looks like up around Disney World, about 90 degrees for a high tomorrow for us, about 88. The forecast overnight tonight, well, look for mostly cloudy skies. 30% chance of a shower or a thunderstorm. And mid 70s for a low tonight. Now for tomorrow, if you're out there, partly cloudy. Chance of rain not too high, but still in there, a 30% chance. And temperatures in the upper 80s. For boaters overnight, use caution. East northeast winds 15 to 20, seas 4 to 6, and it's going to be choppy out there. And uh, low tide 134 this morning. And look for high tide at uh, 732 in the morning. Sunrise 629 and sunset at 812. So the forecast still a little bit on the wet side. If you've got an umbrella, which I do, and it's at home where it doesn't belong, Sally. Make uh, sure and grab it. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. It was run for your life in the Philippines today, trying to keep ahead of a potentially deadly volcano. Mount Pinatubo started belching, belching soot and gas into the air last Friday, and this morning everybody left Clark Air Force Base just 12 miles away. About 14,000 soldiers and family members went 60 miles south to Subic Bay Naval Base, and they're going to stay there until the military says it's safe to go back. At Japan's erupting Mount Unzen, the fear of lava is being overshadowed by fear of mudslides. Heavy rains are loosening the already unstable ground. Officials evacuated hundreds of people from the mountain's north side today. Scientists also recorded the largest flow of ash and heated rock since the volcano erupted Saturday. And still ahead, a Hallandale paramedic who is de battling a deadly disease is also waging battle against the city. And the needle scare strikes again in South Florida and again the victim is a child. Within the black, there is a power. Draconois, immense fragrance by Guy La Roche, Paris. Feel the power. Now, with the purchase of $27 or more, this Dracarnois sport duffel is your gift. Available at Moss Brothers Jordan Marsh. He's faxing it from Thailand. The import firm of Franks and Crumpler wasn't done by a decorator. He's faxing an elephant. Their office manager is Mr. Crumpler's sister, Annie. Did. But with AT&T, Thailand's on the phone. They've got the best help around. International 800 service. And AT&T interpreters. He says he can send you 50. Excellent. And that's helping business a lot more than a fancy office. How about some Thai food tonight? If you're buying a world of help from AT&T. 
On the next Golden Girls, Sophia gets hit with a baseball. You remember me? Stan, that looks like a monkey's behind. Stan sees dollar signs. All you have to do is lie on your back. You're about 50 years too late on that one. And hires a quack. Say, ah. Uh. Uh. Yep, she's paralyzed. But Dorothy smells a rat. How you feeling, Ma? No improvement. By the way, you're wearing your knee brace on your neck. It's a home run to the forehead. Nanny! On the next Golden Girls. Tomorrow at 7 on WSVN 7. There is a In Salisbury, Maryland, the hungry are being fed. In Wind Falls, Indiana, the man who learned to read at 47 is making sure others learn earlier. Every day, someone in America is doing something to light up another life. But there is so much more to do. The light to do it is within us all. We only need to share it. Call the Volunteer Center. Do something good. Feel something real. A precedent-setting case in Hallandale today, an AIDS-infected paramedic is awarded a full retirement pension after the city board rules that he contracted that deadly disease on the job. Channel 7's Brooke Bradley has more. Hallandale paramedic John Gautier is dying of AIDS, and he has no doubt as to how he got it. How did I get the disease? I got it on the job in the Hallandale Fire Department. I got it, uh, I have for years, for over 19 and a half years, I've had my hands in feces, urine, vomit, spit. Gentlemen, you name the excrement that can come out of your body, and I've had my hands in it. Gautier was diagnosed with AIDS one and a half years ago, but as is the case with most AIDS patients, it's nearly impossible to say exactly how or when he got it. No doctor's testimony is going to specifically state medically that it was service-connected or was not service-connected. But despite that, three of the five board members sided with Gautier voting to award the paramedic his full pension after a grueling four-hour hearing. Dozens of Gautier's co-workers were there to cheer him on, and Gautier, overcome with emotion, says his family now has financial security and firefighters have a victory. For the fire service, for the men and women that put their lives on the line every day on the job, that's what it means. We give ourselves a every inch we can. Gautier says this pension will allow him to live the rest of his days in peace and to die with dignity. He says that's all he ever wanted and all he has left. And I have fought for justice for firefighters my whole career and I thank God that I have finally received some for myself. In Hallandale, Brooke Bradley, Channel 7 News. Now, for the next 10 years, Gautier and his family will get 75% of his $40,000 salary. Gautier's doctors say that he's only got a few months to live. Some anxious days ahead for a Hialeah boy who was pricked by a needle. The youngster was walking to school at North Hialeah Elementary today when he stepped on a needle. It was lying in a drainage ditch. The point went right through his shoe and stuck his big toe. Tonight, the needle is being tested for AIDS and other possible diseases. A-OK. -okay. That's what President Bush told reporters today about his health. Mr. Bush jogged two miles at Camp David today before returning to the White House. Not bad for a man who turns 67 this week. The president has been on medication for Graves' disease. Doctors discovered his problem a month ago when he suffered an irregular heartbeat while he was jogging. Well, still ahead, it looks like Miami is coming up a winner for Major League Baseball. Jim Barry is next with sports. Gary comes out with one of those fake arrows through his head. Fake arrows? And now these aren't the guys who write Nelson's news. How about a pie in the face? A pie in but sometimes I wish I had the help. Nelson's news is coming up. You know the old saying, you can never have too much of a good thing? Yeah. Well, whoever said that must have had the Arsenio Hall show in mind.
because this week's guests are too good to be true. On Monday, watch for L.A. Law's Susan Rutan, Chicago Bull Scotty Pippen, and Melissa Manchester. Later in the week, go a few rounds with Muhammad Ali and Thomas Hearns. Then move to the music of Simple Minds and sex symbol Sheila E. Don't miss a minute. Stay up a little bit longer for the Arsenio Hall Show. Tonight at 11 on WSVN 7. If I won Lotto, I'd become a famous concert pianist and go on world tour. Is my plan. First, I get a piano, then I get some music, then I get some lessons. Then I hop my private jet and zoom off around the globe, bringing music to millions of my adoring fans. Then I go to London and give a command performance for the Queen of England. If you won Lotto, you could do practically anything you wanted. Maybe after the show, I could meet some dukes, hang out, have tea. So nicely. On the next Joan Rivers, Jane Curtin drops by with a surprising statistic. A recent report in the New York Times shows that in 1991, men are contributing one full minute a day to household chores. <laughs> That's the swinging sound of Kit McClure and her all girl big band. The Joan Rivers Show, tomorrow at 10 on WSVN 7. Habitat for Humanity is coming to Liberty City to build 14 homes in just seven days. Join former President and Mrs. Jimmy Carter on June 18th for a special dinner benefiting Habitat for Humanity. For more information, call 670-2224. Wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. The power to wake up Maybe young minds. Teachers have that power. Reach for it. Say. I'm Edward James Olmos, and we're recruiting new teachers. For information, call 1-800-45-TEACH. Channel 7 News Sports, brought to you in part by Cellular One, connecting phones to people instead of places. Imagine no limits. Now, Channel 7 Sports with Jim Barry. Major League thrills like this seem headed for South Florida. The National League wants to bring its baseball acts to Miami. Well, we haven't scored just yet, but in baseball terms, the winning run is at third with nobody out. Baseball's expansion committee confirms that it wants new teams in Miami and Denver. And if the owners go along, it means play ball here in just two years. Tony Zarella has more. The sweet sound of the crack of the bat. It's a sound we can look forward to now in South Florida. After much speculation and anticipation, the word is out and all but official. Baseball is coming back, and we're not just talking exhibitions here. Well, we are one of the uh, two finalists. Uh, from the, uh, got the approval of the National uh, League Expansion Committee, and needless to say, we're very pleased and excited for, uh, for everyone in South Florida, ourselves included. I talked to Bill White twice, and uh, he confirmed uh, that uh, the packages had gone out, and the owners now have in hand the recommendation of the Expansion Committee, and uh, we're enthused, and I want to say thanks again to uh, everybody in South Florida. A smiling Wayne Heisinger, and a relieved Wayne Heisinger as well, because while Miami was at the top of most polls, Heisinger and company remained reserved. We started behind, and uh, we, uh, there's no question we were behind, and only 12 or 13 months ago, uh, you know, Miami wasn't even mentioned. But now everybody's talking baseball in Miami, and everybody wants a piece of Heisinga. It was only fitting that Joe Robbie, the man who brought football to Miami, seemed to smile upon the man who's bringing baseball to South Florida. But even among the media circuits, there was a guarded optimism among those on the inside. You see, there's still a matter of that vote on Wednesday. And while we don't expect anything to go wrong, these guys will tell you the vote ain't over till it's over. We need nine owners out of the uh, National League, and we need eight owners from the American League. And so uh, there's a lot of work to do yet. But you got to feel good. We feel good. We feel good. It's the first step. And by the middle of the week, they should be uncorking the champagne. Tony Zarella, Channel 7 Sports. All right, Wayne Heisinger quoting James Brown. I feel good. Baseball owners meet in L.A. Wednesday. They could vote then. However, Commissioner Faye Vincent doubts the vote will come that soon. But a Channel 7 Sports crew will be there just in case. Well, judging by what I saw tonight, there is one club our new expansion team could beat. The Cubs, they were smacked all over Wrigley Field this evening. Digger Phelps is happier so now that he's not coaching, still not dressing any better. Oh. <laughs> Dodgers were laughing too. LA's Cal Daniels reaches out and parks one into the right field seats. But here was the killer, Lenny Harris up. This isn't just a home run, folks. This, I'm afraid, is a 
grand slam. It was 12-1 to 1 in the fourth inning. No wonder they had the white hankies out. Dodgers are punishing the Cubs at Wrigley. 13-4, to 4, I believe, is the score now in the seventh. Elsewhere in the big leagues, the Reds behind Jose Rijo have knocked off the Phils. St. Louis nips the Giants. Pittsburgh has beaten the Padres. Montreal leads Atlanta in the eighth. Mets lead Houston in the sixth. And over in the American League, the Indians are losing to the Twins 8-5 in the seventh. Well, when I watched Jim Curry win Lipton, I had no idea I was watching a future Grand Slam champ. Neither did he. But as we see in the start of the night, old Jim Starr has taken off. In fact, you could say he's flying like a courier pigeon. <clears throat> yeah, in one year, his rank has zoomed from 25th to 4th. And after yesterday's French Open win, Courier's career earnings have hit $1.7 million. So he's doubled his winnings in just one year. Must be nice. Finally, NFL players tackled a golf course today in northern Florida. And let's just say these guys are big enough to change the rules. Here is Rob Moore, the New York Jets receiver. After two weed whacker swings, <laughs> he says, let's try a more direct approach. <laughs> but here's Philly's Keith Byers with a more civilized approach. Let him in, let him in. Oh, yeah. Finally, finally. Bad oh, bad. Bad. I like this. <laughs> this is not a bad game after all. <laughs> Nice shot, Keith, but change your shirt. You're all sweaty. And since we're getting a baseball team, Mr. Yeah. Chambers, you play baseball. What position are we going to put you at? Outfield. You're not fast Anywhere. enough to play outfield. I'll play right Can you hit 220? <laughs> <laughs> That's I the same so. place. Yes, it is. When might we find out? Uh, I think it's probably going to be about a month, although there's going to be a lot of pressure on the owners to wrap this thing up because people are tired of being on pins and needles. Sure. So the vote could come this week. Uh, the owners begin their meetings in Santa Monica, California, beginning Wednesday. Oh, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jerry. Sure. Still ahead, the boss is no longer a solo act. Now we're going to show you a wedding dress that is worth its weight in gold. Cellular One on Cellular Communication. If you don't know where a person is, you can only try to phone the places he might be. But imagine the freedom of being able just to phone the person, regardless of where he is. Each person, one number. Cellular One is now building the nationwide network to make this dream a reality. Cellular One. Imagine. No limits. To learn more, call 1-800-IMAGINE. A fugitive who's running for his life. But if that guy dies, you hang. A young schoolgirl who's chasing a dream. I want to get out of this place. Together, they formed a special bond. If you want to be with me, you jump when I jump. On the road to adventure, suspense, and danger, Starlight Hotel. Starlight Hotel, Wednesday on the WSBN 7 Movie at 8. Mothers, fathers, can we talk? How are you going to get your children to learn so they can earn? You know what I mean. Off your charge cards and out on their own. How? By getting them to read and to keep them reading. I know yours won't read, right? Wrong. Read to Achieve is a new national program with a list of books that work. They're funny books and factual books. They're wonderful books. Read to Achieve. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Parents' Choice, Box 185, Newton, Massachusetts, 02168. David Ruffin, the former lead singer of The Temptations, was laid to rest today, and it was only fitting that the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, sing a tribute to one of the kings of Motown. And a medley of other Motown legends were also on hand to sing their last respects. Ruffin died June 1st of a drug overdose. Over 2,500 people jammed into a Detroit church today for the funeral. Thousands of others filled the streets outside. He was born to run, but tonight Bruce Springsteen has a running mate. 
The rocker married longtime girlfriend Patty Schiaffa over the weekend. The couple tied the knot at their home in Beverly Hills. They already have a one-year-old son. Schiaffa was a singer in the Boss's E Street Band. Spring scene divorced actress Julianne Phillips after he and his backup singer started making beautiful music together. Rap star MC Hammer wants to nail the globe with supermarket tabloids. The rapper has filed a $30 million libel suit against the Boca Raton-based paper. Hammer says the globe falsely reported that he watched a gang rape in California and did nothing about it. Those designing women are getting a new design. Two of them are out, and a new one is on her way in. After months of feuding with the producers, Delta Burke has been bounced, and Gene Smart is leaving on her own. Jan Hooks formerly of Saturday Night Live, is going to join the show now. You know the saying, for a wedding you need something old, something new, something borrowed, and something... Well, how about gold? For the bride who wants to look like a million bucks, this is just the dress. It's made out of a glittering 24 karat gold. It was created by a Japanese designer. Now, for you brides-to-be uh, who might want to stick to the traditional white, it's probably a good idea with this dress. The price tag on this thing, a cool $800,000. Still ahead, we always expect Nelson's news to give us a laugh. Out. But how does Gary get all those ideas? Take out. We're going to show you next. It's simple. With low prices nobody can beat, Winn-Dixie saves you more than any other supermarket. Take Publix, for instance. On May 3rd, 79 of the same grocery items were purchased at both stores. The result, Publix 182.15. Winn-Dixie, 161.34. Winn-Dixie is 11.4% lower than Publix. So it's simple to see where you should shop. Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. Of course I killed them. I thought about hiring somebody to kill them for me, but those guys can be really expensive. Believe me, it's easier than you think. I just aimed, shot, and killed those little creeps myself. Black Flag Ant and Roach Killer kills faster than ever with its exterminator-proven ingredient. They all deserve to die. Faster killing Black Flag. On the next Golden Girls, Sophia gets hit with a baseball. You remember me? Stan, that looks like a monkey's behind. Stan sees dollar signs. All you have to do is lie on your back. You're about 50 years too late on that one. And hires a quack. Say, ah. Uh... Yep, she's paralyzed, but Dorothy smells a rat. How you feeling, Ma? No improvement. By the way, you're wearing your knee brace on your neck. It's a home run to the forehead. Ladies! On the next Golden Girls. Tomorrow at 7 on WSVN 7. This whole drug thing confuses me. If you do drugs, you end up in jail, or you're probably going to be dead. It'll mess me up. It'll mess me up. I have a lot of goals, and... And I'm planning to reach them. I won't do drugs because I have dreams of having a good life. People who do drugs are boneheads. You can't take drugs while you work and do a good job. They're destroying our future. I never do drugs because I love life. And I thank God for the life that he gave me and for being here for all my friends. <laughs> Sampras comes up to serve. Jan Stevenson makes the drive. A.C. Green and Charles Smith pound the boards. Marcus Allen rushes up the middle. Jay Schrader with the touchdown. There are a lot of different parts to play in the American Red Cross. Play your part. And now tonight's top stories. Today, the National League confirmed that Miami is one of the two top cities in line for a Major League Baseball expansion team. The final decision could come Wednesday when the baseball owners meet out in California. And things are finally calming down in Gainesville now that someone is in jail charged with murdering two University of Florida students. Other students on campus say that while they feel bad about the murders, they feel better knowing that someone is in custody. And it was the parade to beat all parades today up in New York. Millions of people lined Manhattan's so-called Canyon of Heroes for a huge ticker tape parade. It was a salute to the veterans of the Persian Gulf War. Twelve million pounds of paper and yellow ribbons fell to the ground. And now sanitation workers are cleaning up all this garbage. And of course, it's going to be recycled. 
Let's hope it doesn't rain there. It could be quite a mess. Let's check in with Tom Burris with one la for one last look at our weather, Tom. Be a little tough to pick up that way. Let's see what's going to be going on. Now, we've got some showers and storms out there right now, running from the Bimini's down through South Dade and the Keys. For the lower third to one half of the state tonight, some widely scattered showers. A little bit better chance than the south end of Dade County down into the Keys. Look for about 75 for a low. The 60s up north tonight. And tomorrow, most of the activity over the south, one half to one third of the state again. Some very widely scattered showers. That's about it and temperatures in the upper 80s to around 87 Key West, around 90 from Orlando down to Tampa. Now, for boating tomorrow, it's going to be a little better than it will be overnight tonight. East winds at 15, 3 to 5 foot seas and a moderate shot for tomorrow. And I think we're going to see those upper 80 degree temperatures sticking with us all the way into the weekend. And there will be a chance for a few widely scattered showers and thunderstorms and along the uh, southeastern coast during the morning hours also. So again, overnight tonight, we've got a few showers and storms which are in the forecast. And if you're going to be out and about tonight, kind of keep an eye out for those. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. We'll take it. Thank you, Tom. Channel 7 News is going to bring you breaking stories throughout the night as they happen. And tomorrow morning, we're going to have all the day's news on Today in Florida beginning at 6 o'clock if you're up early. Among the stories we'll have for you, it's called Psychodrama Patients Acting Out Their Troubles for Their Therapist. Movie maker Spike Lee often finds himself in the center of controversy, and his new film is no exception. We'll talk about that. And you could call it animal magnetism, matchmaking for mutts, these stories, and more on Today in Florida on Channel 7. It is time now for another edition of Nelson's News, and we are just so sure that it's going to be real funny. Yeah, yeah, it's time for another Nelson's News, and it'll be really funny. I know you expect me to be funny, clever, at least mildly amusing. And I know why you expect me to be funny. I, I hear it all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that Nelson's news. What a wonderful group of people he has around them. That Gary Nelson. He wants to have some really good writers. <laughs> <laughs> you see, everybody thinks Nelson's News has a cast of writers behind it, cranking out one incredibly entertaining, raucously funny line after another. <laughs> I don't. Now, some folks do, but I don't. Johnny Carson has a bunch of writers who sit around thinking up funny things. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Jay Leno has about 50 guys who do nothing but make up Dan Quayle jokes. Back there at the White House. George Bush has a bunch of writers who do nothing but make up Dan Quayle jokes. But if I'm going to tell a Dan Quayle joke, I have to make it up myself. Of course, if I was in the big time, like Carson or Leno or Arsenio, I'd have a stable of writers, a bunch of really clever people who could listen. Gary comes out with one of those fake arrows through his head. Fake arrows through the head? No, no, we gotta be funnier than that. This is Nelson's news. A pie, a pie in the face. Yeah, a pie, pie in the face. In the face. That's it's a pie in the face. That'll do it. Okay, people. Is that script ready yet? Uh, here it is, boss. <sighs> Wait a second. Wait a second. What's that smell? What a smell? It's this script. It stinks. You people get back to work and don't come out until it's funny. Yeah, if I was in the big time, I'd have a bunch of high paid writers and I'd be funny every night. I don't have a bunch of high paid writers, though, but you know what I do have? <laughs> That's right. The laugh track. And with the laugh track, I can say anything and be funny. Anything. <laughs> you see? Tennis shoes. <laughs> Damn quail! <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get back to the show! <laughs> Well, he made us laugh <laughs> with that. Can you believe it? And that wraps up Channel 7 News at 10 o'clock. I'm Rick Chambers. <laughs> and I'm Sally Fitz. We're going to see you again tomorrow night. Good night. Good night.